Plus. Tap to see all recipients. July 18th at 2.50 p.m. Two attachments, the theology, of, arithmetic, from the Egyptian, Platonic, and Pythagorean school of thought, said to be written by the great Neoplatonist Iamblichus, birth 245 AD, death 325 AD, on the monad, Nicomachus says that God coincides with the monad, since he, is seemingly everything which exists, just as the monad is in the, case of number, and there are encompassed in it in potential things, which, when actual, seem to be extremely opposed, in all the ways, in which things may, generally speaking, be opposed, just as it is, seen, throughout the introduction to arithmetic, to be capable, thanks to its ineffable nature, of becoming all classes of things, and, to have encompassed the beginning, middle and end of all things, whether we understand them to be composed by continuity or by, juxtaposition, because the model is the beginning, middle and, end of quantity, of size and moreover of every quality, just as without the monad there is in general no composition of, anything, so also without it there is no knowledge of anything, whatsoever, since it is a pure light, most authoritative over everything in general, and it is sun-like and ruling, so that in each of these, respects it resembles God, and especially because it has the power, of making things cohere and combine, even when they are composed of many, ingredients and are very different from one another, just as he made this universe harmonious and unified out of things, which are likewise opposed. Furthermore, the monad produces itself and is produced from, itself, since it is self, sufficient and has no power set over it and is, everlasting, and it is evidently the cause of permanence, just as God, is thought to be in the case of actual physical things, and to be the, preserver and maintainer of natures. So they say that the monad is not only God, but also intellect, an androgyne, it is called intellect because of that aspect of, God which is the most authoritative both in the creation of the, universe and in general in all skill and reason, even if this aspect of, God were not to manifest itself as a whole in particular matters, yet, in respect of its activity it is intellect, since in respect of its, knowledge it is sameness and unvarying, just so, the monad, which, contrived by harmonizing the opposition of the sequences of squares and oblong numbers, that is why it is called artificer and modeler since in its, processions and recessions it takes thought for the mathematical, natures, from which arise instances of corporeality, of propagation, of creatures and of the composition of the universe, hence they call, it Prometheus, the artificer of life, because, uniquely, it in no way, outruns or departs from its own principle, nor allows anything else to do so, since it shares out its own properties, for however far it is extended, or however many extensions it causes, it still prohibits outrunning and changing the fundamental principle of itself and of those extensions, so, in short, they consider it to be the seed of all, and both male and female at once, not only because they think that what is odd is male in so far as it is hard to divide and what is even is female, in so far as it is easy to separate, and it alone is both even and odd, but also because it is taken to be father and mother, since it, contains the principles of both matter and form, of craftsmen and, what is crafted, that is to say, when it is divided, it gives rise to the, dyad, for it is easier for a craftsman to procure matter for himself, than for the reverse to happen for matter to procure a crafts, man, and the seed which is, as far as its own nature is concerned, capable of producing both females and males, when scattered not, only produces the nature of both without distinction, but also does, so during pregnancy up to a certain point, but when it begins to be, formed into a fetus and to grow, it then admits distinction and, variation one way or the other, as it passes from potentiality to, actuality, if the potential of every number is in the monad, then the monad, would be intelligible number in the strict sense, since it is not yet, manifesting anything actual, but everything is conceptually together in it, there is a certain possibility in there also calling it matter and, even receptacle of all, since it is productive even of the dyad, which is matter, strictly speaking, and since it is capable of, containing all the principles, for it is in fact productive and disposed to, share itself with everything, likewise, 
They call it chaos which is Hesiod's first generator, because chaos gives rise to everything else, as the monad does, it, is also thought to be both mixture and blending, obscurity and, darkness, thanks to the lack of articulation and distinction of, everything which ensues from it, Anatolius says that it is called matrix and matter, on the, grounds that without it there is no number, the mark which signifies the monad is a symbol of the source of, all things, and it reveals its kinship with the sun in the, summation of its name, for the word monad when added up yields, 361, which are the degrees of the zodiacal circle, the Pythagoreans called the monad intellect because they, thought that intellect was akin to the one, for among the virtues, they likened the monad to moral wisdom, for what is correct is one, and they called it being, cause of truth, simple paradigm, or to concord what is equal among greater and lesser the, mean between intensity and slackness moderation and plurality, the instant now in time, and moreover they called it ship. Chariot frien la happiness. Furthermore, they say that in the middle of the four elements, there lies a certain monadic fiery cube, whose central position they, say Homer was aware of when he said, as far beneath as is Hades, so far above the earth or the heavens. In this context, it looks, as though the disciples of Empedocles and Parmenides and just, about the majority of the sages of old followed the Pythagoreans, and declared that the principle of the monad is situated in the, middle in the manner of the hearth, and keeps its location because, of being equilibrated, and Euripides too, who was a disciple of, Anaxagoras, mentions the earth as follows, those among mortals, who are wise consider it to be the hearth, moreover, the Pythagoreans say that the right angled triangle, too was formed by Pythagoras when he regarded the numbers in the, triangle monad by monad, the Pythagoreans link matter closely with the dyad, for matter, is the source of differentiation in nature, while the dyad is the, source of differentiation in number, and just as matter is indefinite, and formless, so also, uniquely among all numbers, the dyad is, incapable of receiving form, not least for the following reason also, the dyad can be called indefinite, shape is encompassed in actuality, by means of at least and in the first instance three angles or lines, while the monad is in potential, calling the monad Proteus as they do, is not implausible, since, he was the demigod in Egypt who could assume any format, contain the properties of everything, as the monad is the factor, of each number, on the dyad, from Anatolius, adding dyad to dyad is equivalent to multiplying them, adding, them and multiplying them have the same result, and yet in all, other cases multiplication is greater than addition, among the virtues, they liken it to courage, for it is already, advanced interaction, hence too they used to call it daring, and, impulse, they also gave it the title of opinion, because truth and falsity, lie in opinion, and they called it movement, generation, change, division, length, multiplication, addition, kinship, relativity, the ratio in proportionality, for the relation of two, numbers is of every conceivable form, so the diet alone remains without form and without the limitation, of being contained by three terms and proportionality, and is, opposed and contrary to the monad beyond all other numerical terms, as matter is contrary to God, or body to incorporeality, and, is as it were the source and foundation of the diversity of numbers, and hence resembles matter, and the diet is all but contrasted to, the nature of God in the sense that it is considered to be the cause, of things changing and altering, while God is the cause of sameness, and unchanging stability. So each thing in the universe as a whole is one as regards the natural and constitutive monad in it, but again each is divisible, in, so far as it necessarily partakes of the material dyad as well. Hence, the first conjunction of monad and dyad results in the first finite, plurality, the element of things, which would be a triangle of quantities and numbers, both corporeal and incorporeal, for just as the sap of the fig tree congeals liquid milk because of its active and productive property. So when the unificatory power of the monad approaches the dyad, which is the fount of flowing and liquidity, it instills limit and gives form, that is number, to the triad. For the triad is the source in actuality of number, which is by definition a system of monads. But in a sense the dyad is a monad on account of 
being like a source. The dyad gets its name from passing through or asunder, one for the dyad is the first to have separated itself from the monad, whence, also it is called daring. For when the monad manifests unification, the dyad steals in and manifests separation. It rules over the category of relativity too, either by virtue of its ratio as regards the monad, which is double, or by virtue of its ratio, as regards the next number after it, which is sesquialta, and these ratios are the roots of the ratios which extend infinitely in either direction, with the consequence that the dyad is also in this respect, the source of multiplication and division, the dyad is also an element in the composition of all things, an element which is opposed to the monad, and for this reason the dyad is perpetually subordinate to the monad, as matter is to form, hence, since form is capable of conceiving being an eternal existence, but matter is capable of conceiving the opposites too. These, the monad is the cause of things which are altogether, similar and identical and stable, that is of squares. Not only because, the sequence of odd numbers, which are formed by the monad, encompass it like no man's and produce squares by cumulative, arithmetical progression, that is, they result in the infinite sequence, of squares, but also because each side, like the turning, points in a race from the monitor's starting point and to the monad, as winning post, contains the square itself, as it adds its outward, journey to return journey. On the other hand, the dyad is the, cause of things which are altogether dissimilar, that is of oblongs, not, only because the kinds of things which are formed by it are the even, numbers, which encompass it like no man's, and which are produced, in cumulative progression, but also because, to take the, same image of turning point, finishing post and starting point, whereas the monad, as the cause of sameness and stability in general, seems also to give rise to generation. The dyad seems to admit destruction and to admit return journeys which are different from its outward journeys, so that it is a material substance and capable of admitting every kind of destruction. The dyad would be the mid point between plurality, which is regarded as falling under the triad and that which is opposed to, plurality, which falls under the monad, hence it simultaneously, has the properties of both, it is the property of one, as source, to make, something more by addition than by the blending power of multiplication, and that is why one plus one is more than one times one, and it is the, property of plurality, on the other hand, as product, to do the, opposite, for it makes something more by multiplication than by, addition. For plurality is no longer like a source, but each number, is generated one out of another and by blending four, and that is why, three times three is more than three plus three, and while the monad and the triad of, opposite properties, the dyad is, as it were, the mean, and will admit, the properties of both at once, as it occupies the midpoint between, each, and we say that the mean between what is greater and what, is smaller is what is equal. Therefore equality lies in this number, alone. Therefore the product of its multiplication will be equal to, the sum of its addition, for 2 plus 2 equals 2 times 2. Hence they used to call it equal, that it also causes everything which directly relates to it to have, the same property of being equal is clear not only, and this is why, it is the first to express equality in a plain and solid fashion. Equality of length and breadth in the plane number 4, and in the, solid number 8 equality of depth and height as well, in its very, divisibility into two monads which are equal to each other, but also, in the number which is said to be evolved from it, that is, 16, which is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which is a plain number of the so-called color, on base 2, for 16 is 4 times 4, and this number is obviously in a sense a, sort of mean between greater and lesser in the same way that the, dyad is, for the squares before it have perimeters which are greater, than their surface areas, while the squares after it, on the other, hand, have perimeters which are less than their surface areas, but, the square alone has perimeter equal to surface area, this is, apparently why Plato and Theodotus went up to 16, but stopped for, some reason at the square whose area is 17 feet, when he was faced, with the manifestation of the specific property of 16 and the, appearance of a certain shared equality, with regard to what, therefore, did the ancients call the dyad, 
inequality and deficiency and excess, because it is taken to be matter, and if it is the first in which distance and the notion of linearity are visible, then here is the source of difference and of inequality, and besides because, to assess it in terms of what precedes it, it is more, while to assess the tetrad in terms of what precedes it, the tetrad is less, and the triad is in the middle of these two. So by this alternative approach it will follow, contrary to what we found earlier, that the triad, rather than what precedes, it, contains the principle of equality, for two is greater than what, precedes it, I mean one, in the first manifestation of the relation of, being greater, and four is less than three plus two plus one in the first manifestation of, the relation of being less, and three is equal to two plus one and falls under the, relation of equality which is indivisible, with the consequence, that the linear number 2 is consonant with what is more, but when, raised to a plain number it is consonant with what is less, it is also called deficiency in excess and matter, for which, in, fact, another term is the indefinite dyad, because it is in itself, devoid of shape and form and any limitation, but is capable of being, limited and made definite by reason and skill, the dyad is clearly formless, because the infinite sequence of polygons arise in actuality from triangularity and the triad, while, as a result of the monad everything is together in potential, and no rectilinear figure consists of two straight lines or two angles, so, what is indefinite and formless falls under the dyad alone, it also turns out to be infinity, since it is difference, and difference starts from its being set against one and extends to infinity and it can be described as productive of infinity, since the first manifestation of length is in the dyad, based on the monitor's a point, and length is both infinitely divisible and infinitely extensible. Moreover, the nature of inequality proceeds in an infinite sequence whose source is the dyad in opposition to the monad, for the primary distinction between them is that one is greater, the other smaller, the dyad is not number, nor even, because it is not actual, at any Right, every even number is divisible into both equal and unequal parts, but the dyad alone cannot be divided into unequal parts, and, also, when it is divided into equal parts, it is completely unclear to which class its parts belong, as it is like a source. The dyad, they say, is also called erato, for having attracted, through love the advance of the monitor's form, it generates the rest of the results starting with the triad and tetrad, apart from recklessness itself, they think that, because it is the, very first to have endured separation, it deserves to be called, anguish, endurance and hardship, from division into two, they call it justice, as it were dichotomy, and they call it Isis not only because the product of its, multiplication is equal to the sum of its addition, as we said, but, also because it alone does not admit division into unequal parts, and they call it nature, since it is movement towards being, and, as it were, a sort of coming to be an extension from a seed, principle and this is why it is so called, because movement from, one thing to another is in the likeness of the dyad, some people, however, misled by numbers which are already, countable and secondary, instruct us to regard the dyad as a system, of two monads, with the result that if dissolved it reverts to these, same monads. But if the dyad is a system of monads, then the monads are generated earlier, and if the monad is half the dyad, then the existence of the dyad is necessarily prior. If their mutual relations are to be preserved for them, they necessarily coexist, because double is double what is half, and half is half what is double, and they are neither prior nor posterior, because they generate and are generated by each other, destroy and are destroyed by each other. They also name it Diambata, the mother of Zeus. They said that, the monad was Zeus, and Rhea, after its flux and extension, which are the properties both of the dyad and of nature, which is, in all respects coming into being. And they say that the name dyad, is suited to the moon, both because it admits of more settings than, any of the other planets, and because the moon is halved or, divided into two, for it is said to be cut into half or into two, comma on the triad. The triad has a special beauty and fairness beyond all numbers, primarily because it is the very first to make actual the potentialities of the monad, hardness, perfection, proportionality, unification, 
limit, for 3 is the first number to be actually odd, since in conformity with its descriptions it is more than equal and has something more than the equal in another part, and it is special in respect of being successive to the two sources and a system of them, both, at any rate, it is perfect in a more particular way than the other numbers to which consecutive numbers from the monad to the tetrad are found to be equal, I mean, that is, the monad, triad, hexad and decad, the monad, as the basic number of this series, is, equal to the monad, the triad is equal to monad and dyad, the hexad, is equal to monad, dyad and triad, the decad is equal to monad, dyad, triad and tetrad, so the triad seems to have something extra in being, successive to those to which it is also equal, moreover, they called it mean and proportion, not so much, because it is the very first of the numbers to have a middle term, which it in particular maintains in a relation of equality to the extremes, but because in the manner of equality among things of the same genus, where there is a mean between greater and less inequality of species, it too is seen as midway between more and less and has a symmetrical nature, for the number which comes before it is more than the one before it, and this being double is the root of the basic relation of being more than, and the number, which comes after it, for, is less than the numbers which precede it, and this, being sesquialter, is the very first to have the specific, identity of the basic relation of being less than, but the triad, between both of these, is equal to what precedes it, so it gains the, specific identity of a mean between the others, hence, on account of it, there are three so-called true means arithmetic, geometric and harmonic, and three which are subcontrary, to these, three and three terms in the case of each mean, and three, intervals, that is, in the case of each term, the differences, between the small term and the mean, the mean and the large term, and the small and the large terms, and an equal number of ratios, according to what was said in ordering the antecedents, and, moreover three reversals appear on examination, of great to small, Great to mean, and mean to small, the monad is like a seed in containing in its healthy and form dan, also an articulated principle of every number, the dyad is a small, advanced odds number, but is not number outright because it is, like a source, but the triad causes the potential of the monad to, advance into actuality and extension, this belongs to the monad, either to the dyad, and each and every to the triad, hence we use, the triad also for the manifestation of plurality, and say thrice ten, thousand when we mean many times many, and thrice blessed, hence too we traditionally invoke the dead three times. Moreover, anything in nature which has process has three boundaries, beginning, peak and end, that is, its limits and its middle, and two, intervals, that is, increase and decrease, with the consequence that, the nature of the dyad and either manifests in the triad by means, of its limits, the triad is called prudence and wisdom, that is, when people, act correctly as regards the present, look ahead to the future, and, gain experience from what has already happened in the past, so, wisdom surveys the three parts of time, and consequently, knowledge falls under the triad, from Anatolius, the triad, the first odd number, is called perfect by some, because, it is the first number to signify the totality, beginning, middle and end, when people exalt extraordinary events, they derive words, from the triad and talk of thrice blessed, thrice fortunate prayers, and libations are performed three times, triangles both reflect an, are the first substantiation of being plain, and there are three kinds, of triangle, equilateral, isosceles and scalene, moreover, there are, three rectilinear angles, acute, obtuse and right, and there are, three parts of time, among the virtues, they likened it to moderation, for it is commensurability between excess and efficiency, moreover, the triad makes six by the addition of the monad, diadan, itself, and six is the first perfect number, from Nicomachus theology, the triad is the source in actuality of number, which is by, definition a system of monads, for the diad is in a sense a monad, on account of being like a source, but the triad is the first to be a system of monad and dyad, but it is also the very first which admits event, middle and beginning, which are the causes of all completion and perfection being attained.
The triad is the form of the completion of all things, and is, truly number, and gives all things equality and a certain lack of, excess and efficiency, having defined and formed matter with a, potential for all qualities, at any rate, three is particular and special beyond all other numbers, in respect of being equal to the numbers which precede it, those who are requesting that their prayers be answered by God, pour libations three times and perform sacrifices three times, and, we say thrice fortunate and thrice happy and thrice blessed and, qualify all the opposites to these as thrice in the case of those two, whom each of these features is present in a perfect form, so to speak, they say that it is called triad by comparison with someone, being unyielding, that is, not to be worn down it gets this name, because it is impossible to divide it into two equal parts, the triad is the first plurality, for we talk of singular and dual, but, then not triple, but plural, properly, the triad is pervasive in the nature of number, for there are three, types of odd number, prime and incomposite, secondary and, composite, and mixed, which is secondary in itself, but otherwise, prime, and again, there are of a perfect, imperfect and perfect, numbers, and in short, of relative quantity, some is greater, some, less and some equal, the triad is very well suited to geometry, for the basic element, in plain figures is the triangle, and there are three kinds of, triangle, acute angled, obtuse angled and scalene, there are three configurations of the moon, waxing, full moon, and waning, there are three types of irregular motion of the, planets, direct motion, retrogression and, between these, the, stationary mode, there are three circles which define the zodiacal, plain, that of summer, that of winter, and the one midway, between these, which is called the ecliptic, there are three kinds, of living creature, land, wind and water, there are three fates and, theology, because the whole life of both divine and mortal beings, is governed by mission and receiving and thirdly requital, with the, heavenly beings fertilizing in some way, the earthly beings receiving, as it were, and requitals being paid by means of those in the middle, as if they were a generation between male and female, one could relate to all this the words of Homer, all was divided, into three, given that we also find that the virtues are means, between two vicious states which are opposed both to each other, and to virtue, and there is no disagreement with the notion that, the virtues fall under the monad and is something definite and, knowable and a wisdom, for the mean is one while the vices fall under the dyad and are indefinite, and knowable and senseless, they call it friendship and peace, and further harmony and, unanimity, for these are all cohesive and unificatory of opposites, and dissimilars, hence they also call it marriage, and there are, also three ages in life, moreover, it is better and less liable to error to apprehend the, truth in things and to gain secure, scientific knowledge by means of the quadrivium of mathematical sciences, for since all things in general are subject to quantity when they are juxtaposed and heaped together as discrete things, and are subject to size when they are combined and continuous, and since, in terms of quantity, things are conceived as either absolute or relative, and, in terms of size, as either at rest or in motion, accordingly the four mathematical systems or sciences will make their respective apprehensions in a manner appropriate to each thing, arithmetic apprehends quantity, in general, but especially absolute quantity, music apprehends, quantity when it is relative, and geometry apprehends size in general, but especially static size, astronomy apprehends size, when it is in motion and undergoing orderly change, on the tetrad, if number is the form of things, and the terms up to the tetrad are, the roots and elements, as it were, of number then these terms, would contain the aforementioned properties and the manifestations, of the four mathematical sciences, the monad of arithmetic, the dyad of music, the triad of geometry and the tetrad of astronomy, just as in the text entitled on the gods Pythagoras distinguishes them, as follows, four are the foundations of wisdom, arithmetic, music, geometry, astronomy, ordered one, two, three, four, Cleanius of Tarentum says, these things when at rest gave rise to, arithmetic and geometry, and when moving to harmony and, astronomy, in the first place, the association of arithmetic with the monad, is reasonable, 
for when arithmetic is abolished, so are the other, sciences, and they are generated when it is generated, but not vice, versa, with the result that it is more primal than them and is their, mother, just as the monad evidently is as regards the numbers, which follow it, but also every specific identity and property and, attribute of number is found first of all in the monad, as in a seed, the monad is in a sense quantity regarded as absolute and as the, sole agent of limit and true definition, for if anything is conjoined, with anything else, it cannot be alone, but must fall under the dyad, for the dyad contains the primary conception of difference, and, music obviously pertains to difference in some way, since it is a, relation and a harmonious fifting together of things which are, altogether dissimilar and involved in difference, and geometry falls under the triad, not only because it is, concerned with three-dimensionality and its parts and kinds, but, also because it was characteristic of this teacher for always to call, surfaces, which they used to term colors, the limiters of geometry, on the grounds that geometry concerns itself primarily with planes, comma but the most elementary plane is contained by a triad, either of, angles or of lines, and when depth is added, from this as a base to, a single point, then in turn the most elementary of solids, the, pyramid, is formed, which, even though in itself it is encompassed, by at least four angles or surfaces, is fifted together by virtue of three, equal dimensions, and these dimensions form the limits of any, thing subsisting in nature as a solid, and astronomy, the science of the heavenly spheres, falls, under the tetrad, because of all solids the most perfect and the one, which particularly embraces the rest by nature, and is outstanding, in thousands of other respects, is the sphere, which is a body, consisting of four things, center, diameter, circumference and, area, that is surface, because the tetrad is like this, people used to swear by Pythagoras, on account of it, obviously because they were astounded at his, discovery and addressed him with devotion for it, so in Pedicles, says somewhere, no, by him who handed down to our generation, the Tetractes, the fount which holds the roots of ever-flowing, nature, for they used ever-flowing nature as a metaphor, for the decade, since it is, as it were, the eternal and everlasting, nature of all things and kinds of thing, and in accordance with it the, things of the universe are completed and have a harmonious and, most beautiful limit, and its roots are the numbers up to the, tetrad, one, two, three, four, for these are the limits and, as it were, the sources, of the properties of number, the monad of sameness which is, regarded as absolute, the dyad of difference and what is already, relative, the triad of particularity and of actual oddness, the tetrad, of actual evenness, for the dyad is often viewed by us as being odd, like on account of being like a source since it is not yet receptive, of the pure properties of evenness and is not capable of being, subdivided, the tetrad is the first to encompass minimal and most seminal, embodiment, since the most elementary body and the one with the, smallest particles is fire, and this is the body whose shape as a solid, is a pyramid, hence the name, seven which alone is enclosed by four, bases and four angles, and this, we can be sure, is why there are four sources of the, universe, whether, as was said before, eight it is seen as an eternal, continuum or as a created composition, the by which, the from, which, the by means of which, and the with what end, that is, God, matter, form, result, and there are evidently also four elements, fire, air, water and, earth, and their powers, heat, cold, wetness and dryness, which are, Disposed in things according to the nature of the tetrad, the heavenly realm has also been arranged in the same way, for, it has been assigned four centers, the one over the zenith, the one, at the ascendant, the one at right angles under the earth, and, the one at the descendant, which four turn out to constitute the, zodiac between them, and moreover it has been assigned four, limits, north, south, east and west, and, taking account of its, sphericity, it has been assigned center, axis, circumference and, area. Moreover, there are also this many so-called 90 degree, divisions of the zodiac, the points at which by means of the ecliptic, there is contact with the four zodiacal signs in which the summer, and winter solstices and the two equinoxes occur, 
which form A, cross by being diametrically opposed, and heaven has four characteristic, movements, which are interrelated and mutually dependent, and is special to it alone, forward through the midheaven and, each latitude, backward through the nadir, upward through, something rising above the horizon, and downward through some, thing setting, there are four traditional seasons of the year, spring, summer, autumn and winter, and there are four measures, so to speak, of, general change, of which the largest is the unbroken one called, eternity the next, time is comprehensible in itself by the mind, the next in order of subordination is critical time which is in a, way accessible to apprehension by our senses, and the one which, has the shortest duration and extension is passing time, and from, another point of view, there is year, month, night and day, analogously, as regards the completion of the universe, there are, angels, demons, animals and plants, which complete the, universe, they even distinguish four kinds of planetary movements, progression, retrogression and two modes of being stationary, primary and secondary, there are four distinct senses in living creatures, for touch is a, common background to the other four, which is why it alone does, not have allocation or a regular organ, there are four kinds of, plants, trees, shrubs, vegetables and herbs, there are four kinds of, virtues, first, wisdom in the soul and, corresponding to it, keen, sensibility of the body and good fortune in external matters, comma second, moderation in the soul and health in the body and good, repute in external matters, third, on the same arrangement, courage, strength and power, and fourth, justice, beauty and friendship, moreover, just as there are four seasons such as summer, so there, are four seasons for man, childhood, youth, adulthood and old age, the most elementary numerical properties are four, sameness, in the monad, difference in the dyad, color in the triad and solidity, in the tetrad, man is divided into four, head, trunk, legs and arms, and there, are four sources of a rational creature, as Philolaus also says in On, nature, brain, heart, navel and genitals, head for thought, heart, for soul and for feeling, navel for the embryo to take root and to, grow, genitals for the emission of seed and for birth, the brain, provides the source for man, the heart for animals, the navel for, plants, the genitals for them all, for they all both sprout and grow, even if plurality is first seen in the triad, nevertheless accretion, of discrete things cannot be conceived of without the tetrad, moreover, among continuous things too, the pyramid falls under, the tetrad and naturally acquires a shape which is hard to dissolve, and which belongs to a body which is hard to dissolve, an accretion, is in a sense the evolution of plurality, and is stronger than anything, which falls under the triad, and just like Solon's apothem about seeing the end of a long, life, 14 it is possible to understand from Homer that those who are, still alive are only thrice blessed in point of happiness, since there, is still the uncertainty of change and alteration, while those who, are dead have happiness securely and are out of the reach of change, in a more complete manner, that is fourfold, for he says of someone, still alive only thrice blessed son of Atreus, but of those who have, died an excellent death, thrice and four times blessed are the, Greeks who perished then. The tetrad is the foundation of natural plurality and accretion, since the four kinds of perfection correspond and are equivalent to, the four perfect numbers which subsist within the decad and are, progressively equal to the numbers which run in unbroken sequence, from the mon to the tetrad, for in the first place, although, the mon is uncompounded, still it has a kind of perfection in, containing everything potentially and in lacking nothing, and, besides, it gives rise to all the other numbers and gives them their specific identities regardless of what alterations differentiation has caused, and if any kind of thing is something perfect when it is equal to its parts, then even though the monad has no parts, nevertheless as a whole it is equal to itself, so it would be perfect. In the second place, the triad is special in being both equal to an successive to the monad and the dyad, while it is perfect in another way and in itself because it in particular contains beginning, middle and end, in the third place, as regards one, two, three, although it is, no longer successive, the hexad is equal to the man perfect and the, 
since that it is the first number to be equal to its own parts, a half, a third and a sixth. In the fourth place, as regards one, two, three, four, the decad, although even less successive, has acquired perfection in a different way from those other ways, for it is a measure and a complete boundary of every number, and there is no longer any natural number after it, but all subsequent numbers are produced by participation in the decad, when the cycle is started a second time, and then again and again on to infinity. So here is a tetractizan. This is the difference between the perfect numbers within the decad. No doubt it is for the following reason that, while the most important and, as it were, more perfect fevers of the tertian and quartan, which are also the most easy to discern, nevertheless the quartan is the more important and the more secure, and hence, harder to illuminate, because of the stability of the number 4, a, stability which binds everything in a pyramidal manner to, secure bases, and this is why they say that Heracles, who was so steadfast, was, born thanks to a detrit, squares a, so to speak, not easy to shake, from their disdain, just like Hermes, who is fashioned in this way, since 4 is cubic and lies midway between the cubic places of the, monad and the hebdomad. It is not surprising to find doctors like Hippocrates, for the hebdomad is particularly critical in illnesses, manifestly saying that, in the real world in general, the tetrad has broad links with the hebdomad, and besides, the joining of the tetrad with the hebdomad makes the decad capable of producing a fourth cubic place in the series. They used to call the tetrad the nature of Aeolus showing the variety of what it is akin to. It is the prerequisite of the general orderliness of the universe, so, they everywhere called it a custodian of nature. Poetry says that, Aeolus provides the winds that give motion, and he is also called, Hippotades, from the speed of the heavenly bodies which bring him, to completion and because of his incessant running, for Aeolus's, the year, on account of the variety of things that grow year by year, and again, they call the tetrad Heracles with regard to the same, notion of the year as giving rise to duration, since eternity, time, cryptical time and passing time are four, as moreover a year, month, night and day, and morning, midday, evening and night, they think that the tetrad is called tetlad, the enduring one, by interchange of t with r because its square root endures the first separation from the monad, and it causes all the dimensions to subsist, or the three dimensions beyond which there are none. The Pythagoreans honored it as the begetter of the decad, and Atolius reports that it is called justice, since the square, that is, the area, which is based on it is equal to the perimeter, for the perimeter of squares before it is greater than the area of those squares, and the perimeter of squares after it is less than the area, but in its case the perimeter is equal, the tetrad is the first to display the nature of solidity, the sequence is point, line, plane, solid that is body, 4 is the first number which is even times even, 4 is the first number which contains the sesquitation ratio, which belongs to the primary concord, the fourth, in its case, everything is equal, area, angles, sides, there are four cardinal points, and there are four distinguishing points, ascendant, descendant, midheaven and nadir, the primary, winds are four, the tetrad comprehends the principle of soul, as well as that of corporeality, for they say that a living creature is ensouled in the same way that the whole universe is arranged, according to harmony. Perfect harmony seems to subsist in three concords, the fourth, which lies in the sesquitation ratio, the fifth, in the sesquilter, and the octave, in double. Once there are the first four numbers, one, two, three, four, then there is also the category of soul which, these numbers encompass in accordance with musical principles, for 4 is double 2 and 2 is double 1, and here is the octaval concord, 3 is 1 and a half times 2, a sesquilter, and here is the 5th, and, 4 is sesquitation to 3, and here is the 4th, if the universe is, composed out of soul and body in the number 4, then it is also true, that all concords are perfected by it, on the pented, from Anatolius, the pented is the first number to encompass the specific identity of all number, since it encompasses two, the first even number, and three, the first odd number. 
hence it is called marriage, since it is, formed of male and female. 31. It is the midpoint of the decade, when it is squared, it always encompasses itself, for 5x5 5 5 equals 25, and, when it is multiplied again, it both encompasses the square as a, whole and terminates at itself, for 5x25 5 5 equals 125, there are five solid figures with equal sides and equal angles, the tetrahedron, that is pyramid, octahedron, icosahedron, cuban, dodecahedron, and Plato says that the first is the figure of fire, the second of air, the third of water, the fourth of earth, and the fifth of the universe. Moreover, there are five planets, not counting the sun and moon. The square on base five is the first to be equal to two squares, the one on base three and the one on base four. A tetrachord is said to consist of the first even and the first odd number three geometric concord is thought to fall under five. Moreover, Whatever you use to add up to 10, 5, will be found to be the arithmetic mean. For example 9 plus 1, 8 plus 2, 7 plus 3, 6 plus 4. Each sum adds up to 10, and 5 is found to be the arithmetic mean. As the diagram shows, the pentad is the first to exhibit the best and most natural mediacy when, in conjunction with the dyad, it is taken in disjunct. Proportion 6 to both the limits of natural number, to the monadas, source and the decad as end, for as 1 is to 2, so 5 is to 10, and, again as 10 is to 5, so 2 is to 1, and alternately, as 10 is to 2, 5 is to 1, and as 2 is to 10, 1 is to 5, and the product of the limits is equal, to the product of the means, as is the way with geometrical, proportion. For 2 times 5 equals 1 times 10. Reciprocally, we are able to see first and the pended, compared with the greater limit, the principle of half, just as we see this principle first in the dyad, compared with the smaller limit, for 2 is double 1, and 5 is half 10. Hence the pented is particularly comprehensive of the natural phenomena of the universe. It is a frequent assertion of ours that the whole universe is manifestly completed and enclosed by the decad, and seeded by the monad, and it gains movement thanks to the dyad, and life thanks to the pented, which is particularly and most, appropriately and only a division of the decad, since the pented, necessarily entails equivalence, while the dyad entails ambivalence, so there are five general elements of the universe, earth, water, air, fire and ether, and their figures are five, tetrahedron, hexahedron, octahedron, dodecahedron and icosahedron. Moreover the sum of the bases of these figures is ten times the principle of the pented. There are five parallel circles in the heavens, the celestial equator, the summer and winter tropics on either side of the equator, which are equal to each other, but secondary in terms of size, and the circles on either side of the tropics, which define the northern and southern elevations, the Arctic and Antarctic circles, which are smallest in size, but they too are equal to each other, and corresponding to the position of these, there are thought, to be five zones on earth too, the hot zone, corresponding to the equator, two well blended zones, corresponding to the two tropics, and an equal number of zones which are uninhabited thanks to the cold of the poles at either end of the earth, there are only five planets, apart from the sun and moon, and, there are this many phases of the moon, Generally speaking, 2, when it is halved, 2 when it is gibbous, and 1 when it is full, some people are more precise, and instead of the two halved phases, put two crescent phases in the number of phases, for the moon is, not really halved at the time when it is thought to be, it only appears, to be halved, but it is demonstrable geometrically that it is altogether, necessary for the illuminated part to be more than it appears, to be and for the dark part to be less. Since the sphere of the moon, is smaller than that of the sun, and more than half of such a sphere, is always lit up, so that the shadow cast ends up conical, and the, shape which is produced in the opposite direction to the verticality, of the lines of the cone is like a calithus, and the circular line which, defines the illuminated part and the dark part circumscribes a base, which is common to both shapes, there are also five contacts among the straight lines which, accomplish the cosmic centers, for it is obvious that these are two, diameters, 
which are the largest lines, intersecting each other at right angles, so they touch themselves in the heavenly sphere, at five points, themselves at the cosmic center, the sphere at those mentioned centers, there are this many sense organs in more highly developed creatures, because of kinship and similarity of arrangement and of descending order to the elements, this is why nature separated, each of the extremities of our bodily part, I mean, the extremities, of our feet and hands, into fivefold way, into fingers and toes, and, there are five types of internal organ, kidneys, lung, liver, spleen, and heart, and, at a general survey, there are five types of parts, which are visible on the surface of the body, head, arms, trunk, genitals and legs, and there are five genera of creatures, those that, live in fire, those that live in the air, those that live on earth, those, that live in water and amphibious creatures, they call the pented lack of strife, not only because ether, the fifth element, which is set apart on its own, remains unchanging, while there is strife and change among the things under it, from, the moon to the earth, but also because the primary two different, and dissimilar kinds of number, even and odd, are as it were, reconciled and knitted together by the pented, which is a composite, whole consisting of their conjunction, just as ether also remains, reconciled to itself in shape and being and so on, and is found to, provide such a property for everything else which displays all the, kinds of opposition the two sources involve, hence Megillus too praises the pented in his on numbers, and, says, the pented is alteration, light, lack of strife, alteration, because it changes three-dimensionality into the sameness of the sphere, by moving cyclically and engendering light, hence it is light too, and it is lack of strife because it combines everything, which was formerly discordant, and brings together and reconciles the two types of number. The pented is highly expressive of justice, and justice comprehends all the other virtues, for justice would be what gives what is appropriate to each thing and governs equality in the soul, and, equality is involved only in the rational part of the soul, while, inequality has to do with the irrational part, unless it yields and, listens to reason, but what is equal is homogeneous, for there is, only one type of equality, but what is unequal is highly heterogeneous, for there are many types of inequality, and has two, primary types, greater and lesser, so also where the soul is concerned, there will be an equal part and an unequal part, and the equal part will be divine and rational, while the unequal part will be mortal and irrational, and the greater aspect of the unequal part is the passionate soul, for it is a boiling over an, as it were, desire to shed excess, while the lesser aspect is the appetitive soul, for it is defective because of its seeking for what is missing, but everything when it is controlled by the rational part of the soul and partakes of equality on account of the rational part, gains virtue, the passionate part acquires courage, the appetitive part moderation, so if there is any number which is equal, times equal, then it would form and be receptive of justice, every square number is equal times equal, but not every square number admits of a mean, but obviously only any one which is odd, for, as a general principle, no mean of an even number can be found, and of the odd numbers, the most appropriate and fifteen would be the basic number of the series, since the numbers which follow it and the series admit its principles, scientific and philosophic demonstrations always make use of the very smallest basic numbers, as both simple and trustworthy, and observe in them as paradigms the properties, which they have in common with numbers of the same kind. For example, they prefer to observe in the dyad set against the monad, the properties of the naturally infinite doubles, and in the triad set, against the dyad the properties of sesquialters, thus the concept, and principle of justice, which is revealed in a number which is, equal times equal, that is a square number, would not be correctly, revealed in an even number, since they cannot have a mean, but, clearly in an odd number and, among odd numbers, in the most, basic of the series, the one which is, as it were, the seed of the rest, because this is the one which is accessible to knowledge. In other words, it will be revealed first in nine, for this, being three times three, is the basic square number of the series, 
since its root is the first odd number, 3, which is the first side number with a mean, and it is the first square number to have a mean. So we must try to adapt our account of justice to this, following the Pythagorean definition of justice, which is the power of repayment of what is equal and appropriate, being encompassed by the mean of a square odd number. In the first place, we must set out in a row the sequence of numbers from the model up to it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Then we must add up the amount of all of them together, and since the row contains nine terms, we must look for the ninth part of the total to see if it is already naturally present among the numbers in the row, and we will find that the property of being the ninth belongs only to the mean itself. So, you see, the pentad is another thing which has neither excess nor defectiveness in it, and it will turn out to provide this property for the rest of the numbers, so that it is a kind of justice on the analogy of a weighing instrument. For if we suppose that the row of numbers is some such weighing instrument, and the mean number 5 is the whole of the balance, then all the parts towards the enyad, starting with the hexad, will sink down because of their quantity, and those towards the monad, starting with the tetrad, will rise up because of their fewness, and the ones which have the advantage will altogether be triple the total of the ones over which they have the advantage, but 5 itself, as the whole in the beam, partakes of neither, but it alone has equality and sameness, the parts adjacent to it gradually decrease in advantage or disadvantage the closer they get to it, just like the parts which move away little by little from the scales on the beam towards the balance, the enyad and the monad are at the furthest distance, whence the enyad has the greatest advantage, the monad the greatest disadvantage, each by a full tetrad, a little further in from, these are the ogdod and dyad, whence the ogdod has a little less excess, the dyad a little less defectiveness, in each case the excess, and the defectiveness is a triad, then, next to these, are the hebdomad and the triad, whence the triad is defective and the hebdomad excessive by the next amount, they are a dyad away, from the center, further in from these are next to the pented, as it, where to the balance, are the tetrad and the hexad, which has the least excess, for no smaller number than this can be thought of, when the beam is suspended, the parts with excess make, excess of both the angle at the scales and their angle at the balance, while the parts with defectiveness make the angle defective in both, cases, and the obtuse angle is the excess of one, since the right angle, has the principle of maximum equality, since in a case of injustice those who are wronged and those who, do wrong are equivalent, just as in a case of inequality the greater, and the lesser parts are equivalent, but nevertheless those who do wrong are more unjust than those who suffer wrong, for the one group requires punishment, the other compensation and help, therefore the parts which are at a distance on the side of the obtuse angle, where the weighing instrument is concerned and in the terms of our mathematical illustration, that is the parts with advantage, are progressively further away from the mean, which is justice but the parts on the side of the acute angle will increasingly approach and come near, and as it were through continually suffering wrong in being at a disadvantage, while the others will travel downwards and into corruption and immersion in evil, they will rise up and take refuge in God through their need for retribution and compensation, at any rate, if it is necessary, taking the beam as a whole, for equality to be in this mathematical illustration, then against such a thing will be contrived thanks to the pentad's participation as it were in a kind of justice. For one possibility is that if all the parts which are arranged at a fifth removed from the excessive parts are subtracted from them and added to the disadvantaged parts, then what is being sought will be the result. Alternatively, thanks to the pentad's being a point of distinction and reciprocal separation, if the disadvantaged one which is closest to the balance on that side is subtracted from the one which is furthest from the balance on the excessive side and added to the one, which is furthest from the balance on the other side, that is one, if, two, effect equalization, four is subtracted from nine and added to one, and from, eight, three is subtracted, which will be the addition to two, and from seven, two is, subtracted, which is added to three, and from six, one is subtracted, which, is the addition to four to effect equalization, 
then all of them equally, both the ones which have been punished, as excessive, and the ones, which have been set right, as wronged, will be assimilated to the, mean of justice, for all of them will be five each, and five alone remains, unsubtracted and unadded, so that it is neither more nor less, but, it alone encompasses by nature what is fitting and appropriate, those who first form the characters of the letters in terms, of shape, since E signifies nine, and the mean of it as a square is E, and the mean in nearly very cases seen as half, considered that E, formed half of the letter O, as if it were cut into two, because in this way justice is most justly seen in the number five, and the arithmetical image of the row is not implausibly likened to, a beam, Pythagoras produced in the form of a maxim for those who, know the instruction do not overstep a beam, that is justice, since in the realm of embodiment there are, according to natural, scientists, three life engendering things, vegetative, animal and, rational, and since the rational is subsumed under the hebdomad, and the animal under the hexad, then the vegetative necessarily, falls under the pented, with the result that the pented is the, minimal extreme of life, for the monad is the root of all generations, and the dyad is change in respect of a single dimension, the, triad in respect of a second dimension, the tetrad in respect of a, third and more complete dimension, and the pented is change in, respect of all addition and increase, which falls under the vegetative, aspect of the soul, in which, it goes without saying, perception in, general is also interspersed, they call the pented nemesis, at any rate, it distributes nineteen the, heavenly and divine and physical elements by means of five, it, distributes the five forms to the cyclical movements both of the, moon and of the rest of the heavenly bodies, the movements being, evening setting, evening rising, dawn setting, dawn rising, and, simple revolution which involves no setting or rising, moreover it, distributes those heavenly bodies which are on epicycles to two, stationary modes, or to progression, or to retrogression, and those, which are not to one natural regularity, the general structure of plants is fivefold, root, stem, bark, leaf, and fruit, and there are five precipitations, of rain, snow, dew, hail, and frost, and five exhalations, steam, smoke, fog, mist and the, so-called whirlwind, which some call cyclone, this is why an, other word for pented is pempered, because these movements are, sent upwards and are subsumed under the pented, because it levels out inequality, they call it providence and, justice, division, as it were, and be bastion because of being, honored at be bastus in Egypt, and Aphrodite because it binds to, allegorical interpretation, each other a male and female number, likewise, it is called, nuptial and androgyny and demigod, the latter not only be, cause it is half of ten, which is divine, but also because in its special, diagram it is assigned a central place, and it is called win, because it divides into the decad, which is otherwise indivisible, an immortal and palace, because it reveals the fifth essence, twenty-seven, and heart-like because of the analogy of the heart being assigned, the center in living creatures, when men are wronged, they want the gods to exist, but, when they commit wrong, they do not want the gods to exist, hence, they are wronged so that they may want the gods to exist, for if they, do not want the gods to exist, they do not persevere, therefore, if, the cause of men's perseverance is their wanting the gods to exist, and if they want gods to exist when they are wronged, and if wrong, though an evil, still looks to nature's advantage, and whatever, looks to nature's advantage is good, and nature is good, and, providence is the same, then evil happens to men by providence, it, is likely that the origins of this too were given by Homer, when he, says, and then the father stretched out golden scales, and put in two portions of death which causes long grief, one for the horse taming Trojans, one for the bronze, armored, Greeks, and he pulled the scales up by the middle, and the death day of the, Greeks was heavier, the portions of the Greeks settled onto the fertile earth, while those of the Trojans rose up towards the broad sky, comma on the hexad, from Anatolius, the hexad is the first perfect number, for it is counted by its own, parts, as containing a sixth, a third and a half, when squared, it, includes itself, for six times six equals thirty-six, when cubed, 
it no longer maintains its elf as a square, for 6 times 36 equals 216, which includes 6, but not 36, 1, it arises out of the first even and first odd numbers, male and female, as a product and by multiplication, hence it is called androgynous, it is also called marriage, in the strict sense that it arises not by addition, as the penta does, but by multiplication, moreover, it is called marriage because it is equal to its own parts, and it is the function of marriage to make offspring similar to parents. The harmonic mean is first formed by the hexad, since the sesquitation ratio of 8 set against 6, and the double ratio of 12 set against 6, are both gained, for by the same fraction, namely a third, 8 both exceeds and is exceeded by the extremes. The arithmetic mean also falls under 6, since the sesquial to ratio of 9 set against it, and the double ratio of 12 set against it, are both gained, for by the same number, 3, 9 both exceeds one extreme and is exceeded by, the other, moreover, its parts, namely, 1, 2, 3, have a certain, arithmetical proportion, moreover, 6 forms a geometric mean, 3, 6, 12, moreover, there are 6 extensions of solid bodies, after the pented, they use naturally to praise the number 6 and, very vivid eulogies. Concluding from unequivocal evidence that the universe is ensouled and harmonized by it and, thanks to it, comes, by both wholeness and permanence, and perfect health, as regards, both living creatures and plants in their intercourse and increase, and beauty and excellence, and so on and so forth, they undertook, to prove this by adducing the following as evidence, the disorder, and, in so far as it itself is concerned, formlessness of the eternal prime matter, and lack of absolutely everything which makes for, distinctness, in respect of quality and quantity and all the other, categories, was separated out and made orderly by number, since, number is the most authoritative and creative kind of thing, and, matter in fact partakes of distinctness and regulated alteration and, pure coherence thanks to its desire for an imitation of the proper, ties of number, but number itself is found to have formed its progressio into, infinity by means of the hexad, in perfect additions, for primary, perfection is having beginning, middle and end, and secondary, perfection is being equal to one's own parts, without excess or, deficiency in being related to them, and the primary type is found, in the triad, as in a root, and the secondary type is found in the, hexad, as the basic number of the series of numbers which have this, type of perfection, but the triad's perfection is also found contingently, in the hexad, for 2 plus 2 plus 2 is again beginning, middle and end, but the hexad's perfection is not to be found in the triad, for its parts, are defective in relation to the whole, and we find that, by nature, and not by our own hypotheses, quantities occur in triads and that, in the adding of numbers these quantities give the total aggregate, right up to infinity, a hexadic identity. For the first triad of, quantities, 1, 2, 3, is given its identity by the hexad itself, and the, second quantities, 4, 5, 6, are again given their identity by a hexad, when a single monadra occurs by starting the cycle again at the, next stage, and the subsequent quantities, 7, 8, 9, are again given, their identity by a hexad, when two monads are reproduced, and the, same goes when 3 and 4 and subsequent triads, 10, 11, 12, and so on, as far as you like, are added up, with the result that it turns out that all number is formed by the dependence of triad on hexad, and since number is formative of the formlessness in matter, we would not be wrong in considering the hexad to be the form of forms, from another point of view, if the soul gives articulation and composition to the body, just as soul at large does to formless matter, and if no number whatsoever can be more suited to the soul than the hexad, then no other number could be said to be the articulation of the universe, since the hexad is found stably to be maker of soul and causer of the condition of life, hence the word hexad. That all soul is harmonic and that the most elementary concordant intervals are the sesquitation and sesquilta, by the combi, 
nation of which all the other intervals are filled, is clear, for when, soul is present, the opposite which have been admitted by the, living creature are reconciled and ordered and tuned as well as, possible, as they yield and correspond to each other and hence cause, health in the compound, the opposites being hot and cold, wet and, dry, heavy and light, compact and loose, and so on, which, would not exist together without some harmony, assuredly, in so, far as soul is present, they can congregate, but when soul departs, then dissolution and desertion of all the components of the creature, occur, moreover, the mentioned elementary sources of harmony, the sesquilter and the sesquitation, neither half, for the sesquilter, cannot exist without this, nor indeed can the musical fifth, which the sesquilter forms, and a third, for the sesquitation is altogether bound up with this, and the musical fourth is naturally bound up with the sesquitation, and six is the first number two, subsume both a half and a third at once, since it is made up of different and contrary factors, the root of things which are divisible by two, and the root of things which are divisible by three, the dyad and the triad, so that, just as there occurs in it the association of things which are altogether at variance, so the hexad is constituted tutored to bring together and into unison things which are altogether different, and since, as we said earlier, eight it is also necessary for the largest class of soul to be a solid number, spherical, in fact, and not solid, only in a male or only in a female way, but in both ways, for vitality is common equally to both species, and since, in this context, six, is the first to contain the principle of even odd nature, nine in what? Is spherical in accordance with it, and not with appended, is, considered to be more suited to the soul, inasmuch as it is androgynous, while five has only one or the other identity, again, solidity turns out to fall under six and to be not single, but, triple, for the square based on a six foot side is the summation of the, cube of odd and even in potential, and at the same time of the cube, of each in actuality, 1 plus 8 plus 27 equals 36, apart from this sum, 36 encompasses harmony as well, 4, it is also the summation of 6, 8, 9 and 12, and their common source, which is the monad, and these are the numbers in which the, musical intervals which most properly constitute harmony in, general are said by musicians to reside, the double of the octave lies, in the extremes, the sesquilter of the fifth lies in each mean being, related in turn to the extremes, a different one in each case, 12 to, the one which is not next to it in the series, that is to 8, a 9 not to, 8, but to 6, and the sesquitation of the fourth lies likewise in the, means being taken in relation to the extremes, but this time to the, ones which are adjacent in the series, not to the ones which are, discontinuous, that is 8 to 6 and 9 to 12, that the hexad is particularly responsible for this is clear, for it, subsists as the basis of all the concords, since it occupies the place, of the lowest string of the tetrachord, and from it is base all the, intervals are mapped out. If we employ a more scientific approach in arranging the embodiment, of the soul, and not only regard it as something three, dimensional, but also consider that it is necessary for each dimension, to be bounded on both sides, we will conceive of two boundaries, for each, and since there are three dimensions, the result will, be six boundaries, which is why the so-called bodily directions are, also this many, seen as two for each dimension, with the result that, the solid embodiment of the soul also falls under the hexad, moreover, this is also why there are six so-called true means, which some call proportions, and this many simple ways of being unequal, to which are assigned all the irrational parts, both of all, other things and of the soul itself, which admit commensuration, and equalization, for the hexad is the first and most basic number, to encompass an arithmetic mean, for since the arithmetic mean is obviously contained primarily in one, two, three, and the combination, of these is the hexad, then the hexad admits the primary expression of proportionality and forms number itself, since the characteristic property of being a numerical mean is found essentially in it, 15 and also the primary embodiment of scalene number is solidified in the sequence up to it, 1, 
2, 3, the Pythagoreans, following Orpheus, called the hexad hole, ness of limbs, either because it alone of the numbers within the decad is a whole equal to its parts or limbs, 16 or because the whole, that is, the universe, has been divided into parts and is harmonious, thanks to it, for since there are seven celestial movements, apart from the movement of the fixed stars, which is eighth, but, complex, and since by their hurtling they produce the same, number of notes, then their intervals and, as it were, means are, necessarily six. They rightly call it reconciliation, for it weaves together male, and female by blending, and not by juxtaposition as the pented, does, and it is plausibly called peace, and a much earlier name, for it, based on the fact that it organizes things, was universe, for, the universe, like six, is often seen as composed of opposites and, harmony, and the summation of the word universe is 600, they also called it health and anvil, as it were, the unwearying, one, because it is reasonable to think that the most fundamental, triangles of the elements of the universe partake in it, since each, triangle is six, if it is divided by three perpendiculars, for it would, be divided altogether into six parts, that is why if there are as, many edges to a pyramid as there are, and as many faces of a cube, and as many angles in an octahedron and bases of a dodecahedron, and edges to a cube and an octahedron and an icosahedron, and, nothing pertaining to their faces or angles or edges is altogether free, from the hexad, there are also six signs of the zodiac over the earth and six under, the earth, progression from the monad to the pentad is straightforward, but, from the hexa the progression finds another starting point and is, repetitive, for 1 and 5 make the next number in the sequence, 6, and 2 and 5 make the one after that, then 3 and 5 next, then 4 and 5, then finally 5 take twice, by means of 5, having the same relationship to itself. They also called it hurler of missiles, presider over cross roads, and measurer of time in twos hurler of missiles from it being, generated by the triad, which tradition tells us is Hecate, when the, triad is hurled, and, as it were, added, onto itself, presider over, crossroads perhaps from the nature of the goddess, 26 but probably, because the hexad is the first to acquire the three movements of the, dimensions, and each movement is twofold, being bounded on, both sides by boundaries, measurer of time in twos because of, the distribution of all time, which is accomplished by a hexad of, zodiacal signs over the earth and another under the earth, or, because time, since it has three parts, is assimilated to the triad, and the hexad arises from two threes. This latter reason is also why they called it amphitrite, because, it yields from itself two separate triads, for separators apart, through being divided into two. The simple idea that the hexad is a very close neighbor of the pentad led to them attributing to it the title dweller by justice. 30. It is also called Thalia because of its harmonizing different things, and panacea, either because of its connection with health, which we mentioned earlier, or as it was self-sufficiency, because it has been furnished with parts sufficient for wholeness. Since there are seven celestial spheres, the intervals fall under the hexad for they are always less by a monad, and there are six, bases which are the boundaries of the three dimensions of a cube, that is of corporeality, because the perfection of the universe falls under the hexad, the, virtue of the creator God is rightly thought to be hexatic, for alone, among all the virtues, wisdom is a divine and perfect true extreme, that is, it is not to mean, but has just one thing simply, opposed to it, its lack, ignorance, which is not opposed by excess or deficiency 34 nor is wisdom absent from any other virtue, but it accompanies all of them, since they are mortal, and it is thanks to this virtue alone, which because of its participation in the hexad, has neither excess nor deficiency in relation to its parts, but altogether, has equality and consequent perfection and wholeness, that the universe is not excessive, in so far as it was fashioned by the wisdom and providence of God and has been occupied by this virtue, both it and, as regards its parts, plants and animals, as will, also appear in our discussion of the Hebdomad. Now, 
in as much as it is relevant to the hexad, we must briefly see, what is the result of forming the sequence which starts with a, monad in the Pythagorean right angled triangle, first, there is the, one actual right angle in it, while there are two angles which are, unequal to each other, but both together are equal to the previously, mentioned angle, just as both the squares formed on each of the, sides which subtend these two angles are equal to the square based, on the line which subtends the right angle, 3 is the quantity, of the smaller of the two sides which contain the right angle, 4. The quantity of the larger one, 5 the quantity of the hypotenuse, and 6 the quantity of the area, that is of half of the parallelogram, which half is defined by the diagonal of the parallelogram. The sequence from the monad to the hexad is continuous, music, starts with the hexad and proceeds by doubles and triples, and the harmonious adaptation which is crucial for all things, and pertains to the viability of seven month and especially nine month children starts with these musical sequences, for whether, in accordance, with the two vital tributaries, double and triple, the sequence, based on the hexad were to proceed doubly by means of twelve, or, triply by means of eighteen, each interval would be filled in such, a way that the sequence would contain two means, the first, exceeding one extreme in the same proportion as it is exceeded by, the other, the second exceeding one extreme by the same number as it is exceeded by the other, with the result that the sequence, would admit the ratios both of sesquialter and sesquitertian intervals, and in either case the engendering of living creatures, which, is what we are trying to explain, will completely occur, for in the, double sequence of 6 and 12, where 8 and 9 occupy the means, and, patently accomplish what has been said, the addition of all, the numbers together, when multiplied by the hexad, results in the, 7. Month period of 210 days, and in the triple sequence of 6 and 18, where 9 and 12 are intercalated and yield in their turn the same harmonic relation, the addition of these numbers makes 45, which, multiplied again by the hexad yields the number of 9 months, that is, 270 days. The result is that both these periods which engender living creatures depend on the hexad, which is then soul like. At any rate, in Plato the first portion in the generation of soul, is very reasonably held to be the hexad, and then there is its double, 12, and its triple, 18, and so on up to 162, 27 times the first, 4, these are the first and least quantities in which is seen the nature, of the two means and that of the sesquiarctival interval in between, both, since the cube of 6 is 216, the period pertaining to 7 month, offspring, when to the 7 months are added the 6 days in which, the seed froths up and germinates, then androcides the Pythagorean, who wrote on the Maxims, and Nubilides the Pythagorean, Aristoxenus, Hippobotus and Nines, who all recorded Pythagoras, deeds, said that the transmigrations of soul which he underwent, occurred at 216 year intervals, that after this many years, at, all events, he came to reincarnation and rebirth as Pythagoras, as it were after the first cycle and return of the soul generating cube, of six, and this number is in fact a recurrent because of being, spherical, and that he was born at other times after these intervals, this is consistent with him having had the soul of Euphorbus, during that period, for there are about 514 years of history from the, Trojan War until the time of Xenophanes the natural scientist and Anacreon and Polycrates and the siege and dislocation of the Ionians by Harpagus the Mede, which the Phocians fled and then founded Massilia, and Pythagoras was contemporary with all of this. At any rate, it is recorded that, when Cambyses took Egypt, Pythagoras was taken prisoner by him, for he was living with the priests, and went to Babylon and was initiated into the non Greek mysteries, and Cambyses was exactly contemporary with Polycrates, tyranny, which Pythagoras was fleeing from when he went, to Egypt, so when twice the period has been subtracted, that is twice, 216 years, 82 years are left for his life. Since the nature of the number 6 is in a sense crucial for the, generation and formation of soul, then what Plato says will be, found helpful, as follows the compound structure, from which is, 
dispense the generation of soul and from which are separated the portions up to twenty-seven times the first, is hexatic according to Plato too, since he focuses on precisely the property we have attributed to the hexad, for since the hexad is not only a clear likeness, more than any other number, of the even odd monad, because it is the very first to contain parts with opposite names and opposite denominations, for its third is two, its half three, its sixth one, and the whole is six, but, also because it is a compound of the first actual odd number and the first actual even number at once, and for this reason it alone of all numbers within a decade is half even, half odd, and is therefore patently a mixture of indivisible being and divisible being, and, since it is more directly oblong than any number, for it is unreasonable to consider the dyad as oblong, and since in addition it has been discovered to be the first solid number, even if scalene, nevertheless it is three-dimensional because of its means, and, since it is the smallest of all the numbers which fall under it and, are completely counted by their own parts, for all these reasons, Plato blended the mixture in a reasonable way, the first ingredient, being indivisible being, the second divisible being, and the third the, being which consists of both together, so that two things may each, be threefold, or, conversely, three things twofold, as being equal, two two times three or three times two, odd and even and even odd. That it is impossible to find within the hex of another number, which admits all the ratios of the harmony of the soul, is also shown, by Aristaeus the Pythagorean, from Anatolius, seven is not bomb of any mother and is a virgin one the sequence, from the monad to it added together totals twenty-eight, the twenty-eighth days of the moon are fulfilled hebdomad by hebdomad, starting with the monad and making a sequence by doubling, seven numbers yield sixty-four, the first square which is also a cube, one, two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two, sixty-four, doing the same, but trebling, seven numbers yield, seven hundred and twenty-nine, the second square and cube, one, three, nine, twenty-seven, eighty-one, 243, 729. Moreover, the hebdomad consisting of the three dimensions, length, breadth and depth, and the four limits, point, line, surface and solid, reveals corporeality. Seven is said to be the number of the primary concord, the fourth, four, three, and of geometric proportion, one, two, four. It is also called that, which brings completion. For seven months children are viable, the hebdomad is critical in illnesses. Seven encompasses the sides, around the right angle of the archetypal right angled triangle. The length of one is four, of the other three. There are seven planets. We see seven things, body, distance, shape, size, color, movement and rest. There are seven movements, up, down, forward, backward, right, left and circular. Plato composed the soul out of, seven numbers three everything is fond of sevens, there are seven, vowels and seven alterations of voice for there are seven ages, as Hippocrates says. Seven of the seasons, which we call ages, child, boy, adolescent, youth, man, elder, old man, one is a child up to the shedding, of death, until seven years, a boy up to puberty, until twice seven. Adolescent up to the growth of the beard, until three times seven. A youth during the general growth of the body, until four times seven. A man up to one short of fifty years, until seven times seven. An elder up to fifty-six years, until seven times eight. From then on one is an old man. From the second book of the arithmetic of Nicomachus of Gerasa, it is called forager because its structure has been collected and gathered together in a manner resembling unity. Since it is alto, jether indissoluble, except into something which has the same denominator as itself, or because all things have brought their natural results to completion by its agency, or rather, what is more, Pythagorean, because the most eminent Babylonians, and Hostanes, and Zoroaster, authoritatively call the heavenly spheres, flocks, either in so far as, alone among corporeal magnitudes, they are completely drawn around a single center, or because their connections are decreed even by scientific savants to also in a sense,
be called clusters and they for the same reason call these clusters, flocks in their holy writings, and also angels by insertion of the lost G hence the heavenly bodies and spirits which are outstanding, in each of these flocks are likewise called angels and archangels, and they are seven in number, with the consequence that the Hebdomad is in this respect most truly a message. Moreover, it is called guardian for the same reason, for not only will there be seven leaders in addition to the number of the guards, but also those which guard the universe and keep it in continuous and eternal stability of this many heavenly bodies. The Pythagoreans say that the heptad is not similar to the other numbers, and they say that it deserves reverence, and indeed they Call it septed as proms the Pythagorean also records in his on, the Hebdomad. Hence too when they say six they stress the, pronunciation of the K and the S, for these are heard together in, the X, so that when they go through the successive numbers step, by step, the S joins on to the seven, so it was imperceptibly, pronounced scepter. The reason for the seventh number being an object of reverence, is as follows, the providence of the Creator God wrought all. Things by basing on the first bomb on the source and root of the creation of the universe, which comes to be an impression and representation of the highest good, and he located the perfection and fulfillment of completion in the decad itself, and the Creator, God necessarily considered that the Hebdomad was an instrument, and his most authoritative limon has gained the power of creativity, for by nature, and not by our own devices, the Hebdomad is a mean between the monad and the decad, and the means, between extremes are in a sense more authoritative than the, extremes themselves, because the terms on either side incline, towards the means, not only do four and seven mediate between the, monad and the decad by an arithmetically equal relationship, and, when added together their sum is equal to the sum of the extremes, and four exceeds one by the same amount that seven is less than ten, Conversely 4 is less than 10 by the same amount that 7 exceeds 1. Not only this, but also the numbers from the mono to the tetrad, are potentially 10, while the decad is this very thing in actuality, and 7 is the arithmetic mean between the tetrad and the decad, that is, in a sense between two decads, one potential, the other actual, since it is half of the sum of both. Moreover, the hebdomad seems to be an acropolis, as it were, and a strong fortification within the decad, just like an indivisible, monad, for it alone admits no breadth, since it is a rectilinear, number and admits only a fractional part with the same denominator, as itself, and, by mingling with any of the numbers within the, decad, it does not produce any of the numbers within the decad, nor, is it produced by the intercourse of any of the numbers within the, decad, but, with a principle which is all its own and is not, shared, it has been assigned the most critical place, hence many things, both in the heavens of the universe and on, the earth, celestial bodies and creatures and plants, are in fact, brought to completion by it, and that is why it is called chance, because it accompanies everything which happens, and critical, time, because it has gained the most critical position in nature, the facts of the heavenly spheres provide important proof of this, thesis, in that the sphere of the moon, which is the eighth from the top and the third from the bottom, carries the influence and power of the influences which revolve around the earth, since it is considered to be the mediator between those above and those below, and it turns out to employ a hebdomad for this, with a tetrad assisting as shield bearer, for the tetrad, along with the hebdomad itself, is evidently a mean in the decad, with the result that necessarily completion and fulfillment are achieved for things by means of both numbers, especially given the 28, which is, perfect in relation to its parts, is the product of the multiplication, of them both, for it is 4 times 7, but the Hebdomad's, assistance is far greater, for the addition of the numbers from the, monad to the Hebdomad yields 28, so the 4 phases of the moon, each last for a 7 fold season and reasonably complete the, month of this heavenly body, which consists of just about 28 days. It is also necessary to calculate the seven configurations of the moon which pertain to its phases by means of a tetrad, sickle, halved, gibbous, full, and again gibbous, when it is illuminated on the other side, and again halved, for the same reason, and again, sickle, 
We also see that the ocean is disposed by the moon in accordance with hebdomadic numbers. It is visibly greatest during the flood, tide at the new moon, then on the second day it has withdrawn a bit, on the third day it is still less, and gradually the swelling of the flood tide decreases more and more until the seventh day, which displays the moon halved, and then again, following this, on the eighth day it becomes again just as it was on the seventh day, that is, the same in power, and on the ninth as it was on the sixth, and on the tenth as it was on the fifth, and on the eleventh as it was on the fourth, and on the twelfth as it was on the third, and on the thirteenth as it was on the second, and on the fourteenth as it was on the first, and then, from a fresh beginning, the third Hebdomad disposes the sphere of water in the same way as the first Hebdomad did, and the fourth in the same way as the second. What need is there now to go through the diminution of oysters and sea urchins and mussels? and the sympathetic affection which, most creatures undergo in relation to this heavenly body, when, we can derive sufficient proof of what is being said in the very, things that happen to human beings, in the first place, women's, evacuations occur by means of the aforementioned hebdomadic, periods, and for this reason are called by some menses and, menstruation, secondly, in general the male seed is emitted, seven times into the female's womb, and within seven hours at the, most it either smears its fertile part for conception or slips away, just as, to be sure, at the opposite extreme, an interval of seven, hours at least elapses between the natural severance of the baby's, umbilical cord and its appearance and delivery, during which, period the fetus is perfectly capable of surviving by itself, while it, no longer behaves as if it were a plant or a part tan is supported by, nourishment from the umbilicus, nor yet does it behave like a, living creature and is detached and self-sufficient thanks to breathing, the outside air, for seven days the embryo resembles a membranous, waterbring, kind of thing, as the physician Hippocrates agrees, when he, says in on the nature of the child. A female relative of mine had a particularly excellent and valuable, dancing girl, who was going with a man, but did not want to get pregnant and be less highly prized by her admirers, the dancing girl heard the sorts of things women say to one another, that when a woman is about to become pregnant the seed stays inside her and does not come out, she took in what she heard, and at one point she noticed that not all the seed came out of her, she told her mistress, and word reached me, when I heard the news, it was on the seventh day, I instructed her to jump up, high into the ground. When she had done so seven times, the seed came out of her, accompanied by a noise, I will describe what the discharge was like, it was as if the surrounding shell of an egg had been stripped off, and within the internal membrane the moist part showed through. That is from Hippocrates, and Strato the peripatetic and Ides, of Curistus and many other physicians say that during the second, hebdomad spots of blood appear on the membrane Hippocrates, mentioned on the outside surface, and during the third day, penetrate through to the moist part, and during the fourth they say, that the moist part coagulates and the middle contains an odor as if, of flesh and blood, obviously because it comes by completion due, to the perfect nature of 28, or because 28 contains the sum of the, two odd cubes, whose essence is limiting, and during the fifth, down to about the 35th day, the embryo is formed in the, middle of it, similar in size to a bee, but clearly articulated, so that, head and neck and trunk and limbs in general are apparent on it, and they say that this embryo is viable in seven months, but if birth is going to occur at nine months, then this formation happens in the sixth hebdomad for a female embryo, and in the seventh for a male embryo, that the hebdomad is particularly responsible for viability is shown by the fact that even seven-month children are thanks to it, no less likely to survive the nine-month ones, while eight-month children, which occur between both, perish from natural necessity, this fact the Pythagoreans, employing mathematical arguments and diagrams, used to deduce by means of considerations such as the following, they add together the basic cubes of the two smallest numbers, that is 8 and 27, the cubes of 2 and 3, to yield 35, in this, Number it turns out that the ratios of the concords, 
by means of which harmony is accomplished, a particular event, for all, generation is from opposites, moist and dry, cold and warm, and opposites do not concur nor do they come together into a compound, of anything except under harmony, and the best of harmonies, which emits all the concordant ratios, is the one which falls, under the number 35, which not only, as regards being made solid, and complete, is accomplished by the two aforementioned cubes, which are equal, times equal times equal, extended in three dimensions, but also is the combination of the first three perfect, numbers, which are equal to their own parts, one potentially, six and, twenty-eight actually, furthermore, it is also the summation of all the relationships of, the concords which display in the basic way harmonic theory, six, eight, nine and twelve, and it has been shown earlier 22 that is 35, which is an, in harmonic and particularly productive parallelogram encompassed, by two odd sides 5 and 7 in length, is life engendering, if, extended and raised to a third dimension by 6, for 6 is most suited to soul, the life force. Quality and color and light accompany corporeal magnitudes, in three dimensions and evidently fall under the pended, in salamand and the condition of life fall under the hexad, which is, why it is so called, completion and thought fall under the hebdomad, the product of 5 times 6 times 7 or 7 times 6 times 5 would obviously also be the, result of 5 times 7 times 6, all of them are 210, which is the number of days in, which 7, month children are engendered, apart from the 6, days during which the compound, the moisture bearing membrane, was shown first to appear, but if these 6 are brought in, the, result would be the recurrent and spherical cube of the souls, number 6, which is made equal to its own parts. Dides says that when 35 is multiplied by 6, the resulting 210 is, a solid number, because 210 is the number of days in 7 months, of 30 days, and Hippocrates says, what moves in 70 days is, accomplished in triple the number, 25 for in fact according to him, it is the trebling of 70 days that makes 210, and of 90 that makes, 270, the periods of 7 month and 9, month children, all seeds appear above ground, during growth, in the course of the, 7th day or thereabouts, and the majority of them are 7 stemmed, for the most part, just as fetuses were sown and ordered, in the womb by the hebdomad, so also after birth in 7 hours, they reach the crisis of whether or not they will live. For all those, which are born complete and not dead come out of the womb, breathing, but as regards the acceptance of the air which is, being breathed and by which soul in general acquires tension, they, are confirmed at the critical seventh hour one way or the other, either towards life or towards death. Children cut their teeth at seven months, and at twice seven sit, up and gain an unswaying posture, and at three times seven they, begin to articulate speech and make their first efforts at talking, and, at four times seven they stand without falling over and try to walk, and at five times seven they are naturally weaned and milk ceases, to be their food, and at seven years they shed their natural teeth and, grow ones which are suitable for hard food, and at twice seven years, they come to puberty and, just as in the first hebdomad of years they, acquired in an articulated manner the full range of expressed, speech, consisting of as many simple words as are natural and, useful for such expression, so they now begin to embark on the, articulation of abstract speech, in so far as there is now a rational, creature, and their being, according to most philosophers, seven, senses which train the rational and are completed especially at this, time, for in addition to the commonly recognized five senses, some, count the faculties of speech and procreation, and the latter is, completed at the time when the procreative faculty naturally, changes for all humans, for males by means of seed, for females by, means of menstruation, hence they only then acquire fitness for, engendering life, and among the Babylonians they do not play a part, in religious ceremonies or partake in their priestly wisdom, but are, debarred from all the initiations there before this time since in the next period it is possible for them to have children, and substitute others for themselves for the fulfillment of the, universe, then the poets are being reasonable when they classify a, 
generation as the 30 year symmetry of the appearance of children, and because of the perfection of the triad, a complete succession consists of three father, son, and grandson. In the third hebdomad, they generally conclude growth in terms of length, and in the fourth, they complete growth in terms of breadth, and there is no other bodily increase remaining to them, for 28 is a complete number. In the fifth hebdomad, thanks to the manifestation of the harmonic, all increase as regards strength is checked, and after these years it is no longer possible for people to become stronger than they are. Hence, when athletes reach this age, some have already stopped winning and do not expect to achieve anything more, though others do not yet give up, and the legal codes of the best constitutions have conscription up to this hebdomad, though some have it until the next hebdomad, and after this point allow people to be officers but not to serve in the ranks anymore. Finally, when the principle of the decade is blended with that of the hebdomad and ten times seven is reached, then man should be released from all tasks and dedicated to the enjoyment of happiness, as they say, if there are four elements, and there are necessarily three means between them, then here too a hebdomad will control all things. This is obviously why Linus the theologian, in the second book on theology of his Tehimenaeus, says, the four sources of every thing are controlled by triple bonds, for fire and earth are linked to each other by geometrical proportion, as earth is to air, so water is to fire, and conversely as fire is to air, so water is to earth, and vice versa. The harmonies of such things are in a sense unifying, and between air and fire there is persuasion, for the elements from air to earth are assimilated to the heavenly bodies by desire and imitation, and always remain in the same condition, being in a sense persuaded and guided by the nature of the primordial beauty, which attracts everything to itself. Moreover, the hebdomad has the property of being the most critical number, not only in pregnancy and in the ages of life, development, but also in disease and health, because it is the most akin and cognate to the human constitution, for our so-called black internal organs are seven and fall under it. They are tongue, heart, liver, lung, spleen and two kidneys, and there are this many parts of the body in general, that is head, trunk, two arms, two legs, and genitals, and taken part by part, there are seven channels in the face, two for eyes, two for ears, two for nostrils and one for mouth, and seven which transmit breath and food, throat, gullet, stomach, guts, intestinal, membrane bladder and the one by the seat, which some call rectum. It is possible to live for seven days with no intake of food, and in geometrical research there are seven types of source which they have identified, point, line, surface, angle, shape, solid and plane, and seven is the quota of the most elementary to admit investigation, for a triangle has three angles, an equal number of sides, and its area is single. Furthermore. Symptoms are confirmed by means of the hebdomad, as inclining either towards sickness or towards health, for all types of fever meet at the seventh day and at no other before it, and so they reach crisis at this point. This can be simply and plausibly demonstrated by means of the property of the various proportion, eight series from the monad which we set out earlier, when we saw that the first and seventh places alone admit both cubes and squares, the fifth and third admit only squares, the fourth admits only cubes, and the second and sixth admit neither, just as among the types of fever they admit neither the tertian nor the quartan, for one, three, five and seven participate in what is called tertian fever, since it is particularly like a square because a square has its origin in plane triangles whose equality of right angles and sides the perfectly commensurate square contains, and is made regular in relation to itself, and since its symptoms always become apparent, with a day's interval in between, so these numbers participate in it, because they are at a third remove from one another, just as they participate in squaring in all the proportionate series by being evenly distributed through the places. And one, four and seven participate in court and fever, which is attended by cubes because it is altogether stable and steadfast as a result of the six square bases, for the process manifests symptoms with two days interval in between, 
and consequently occurs on the fourth day, as in the proportionate series cubes are always accomplished. At the fourth place, the so-called semi-tertian fever does not have a nature peculiar to itself, but is formed by the tertian. It occurs within two periods, of a night and a day each, that is within 48 hours, but it always cuts off three hours, as it reaches one of the two possibilities, attack or remission of the fever, and then passes to the opposite for one 12-hour period. It can, however, yield its symptoms earlier or later, depending on what it does. It is called great semi-tertian or small or median. With regard to the delays of or extensions to either possibility, the second 12-hour period of the second day will participate in the fever, as will the first 12-hour period of the fourth and the beginning of the sixth. These are the periods during which the symptoms become clear. The result is that there is again an onset of the fever in the later period of the seventh day. In a sense the seventh day is in all respects like the first, for these Two days are the only ones which partake of all the types of fever, up to and including the quartan interval, and the first day will be, generative, so to speak, of fevers, while the seventh will be, cryptical and, as it were, testing, but none of all the days in between, partakes of all the types, except that they all partake of quotidian, fever, as necessarily the seventh and the first do too, since this is the, only shared manifestation of symptoms as the display diagrams show. This multiplicity is an attribute common to all series, but the second place in the series escapes tertian and quartan fevers, but partakes of quotidian and semi-tertian. The third place escapes semi-tertian and quartan, but partakes of quotidian and tertian. The fourth place escapes tertian, but partakes of the three remaining types of fever. The fifth place escapes quartan, but partakes of Tertian and quotidian and the irregularity of the remaining one, the sixth, contrary to the fourth, which escaped only one, partakes only of the quotidian, the seventh partakes of them all, as does the first, since the features of the other types are more obvious or simple, but the semi tertian is disorderly, then it should be defined more clearly, as follows the symptoms will not become clear within five. Six hour periods from the initial source of the symptoms. This means that if the previous manifestation of symptoms occurred at noon of the second day, it will be on the evening of the third day that the following manifestation will have its terminus post quorum, while moreover midnight on the fourth day will go up to the very early morning of the sixth, and the result is that there is a crisis at noon on the seventh. This distribution is that of the smallest semi tertian and can be used as a basis to calculate the irregularities, since everything comes together and is distinguished by coincidence, and in a critical manner at the place of the hebdomad, they called it critical time and chance, and custom has entrenched the habit of saying critical time and chance together, why need people now quibble about the hebdomadic critical points, which astrologers in particular believe in. They called the hebdomad Athena and critical time and chance. Athena because it is a virgin and unwed, just like Athena in myth, and is born neither of mother, that is of even number, nor of father, that is odd number, but from the head of the father of all, that is from the monad, the head of number, and like Athena it is not womanish, but divisible number is female, they called it critical time because it encompasses, in a short span of time, activities when they're in crisis and attending to health or sickness, or to generation or destruction, they called it chance, because, just like chance in myth, it controls mortal affairs. There are seven elementary sounds not only for human speech, but, also for the sounds which instruments and the universe make, in short, for enharmonic sound, not only because of the single, primary sounds emitted by the seven heavenly bodies, as we learn, but, also because the prime diagram among musicians has turned out to be the heptachord, while there are three kinds or parts of the soul, rational, spirited, and appetitive, there are four complete virtues, just as while there are three dimensions, there are four limits in corporeal increase. On the octet, we describe the octet as the first actual cube, and as the only number within a decade to be even times even, since four appears to 
combine the characteristics of being on even and even times, even in admitting only two divisions up to the monad, one of itself, the other of its parts, all the ways in which it is put together are excellent and equilibrated tunings. First, it results from the only two numbers, within a decade which are neither engenders nor engendered, I, mean, from one and seven, then, it results from the two which are even, odd, one potentially, the other actually, that is from two and six, then, it, results from the first two odd numbers, that is from three and five, and this, is the combination which is elementary for the generation of cubes, and is the first such sum, since the cube before it, comes about, without combination, while the one after it results from the next, three odd numbers, seven, nine and one one, and the one after that from four, continuous odd numbers, thirteen, fifteen, seventeen and nineteen, semicolon and fourthly, it, results from four taken twice, and four is the only number which both, engenders and is engendered, the consequence is that eight is, completed by means of the first two unengendered numbers, and, from their opposites, numbers which engender, and from the, number which contains both characteristics, moreover, we have, shown that four is the dividing line of harmonic relations, the, dividing line between the concords within it, and the melodies, which are not actual concords, after it, hence they used to call the, Ogdon embracer of all harmonies because of this marvelous, attunement or because it is the first to have been attuned and multiplied so as to be equal times equal times equal, which is a most lawful generation. So when they call it Cadmean they should be understood to be referring to the fact that, as all historians tell us, Harmonia was the wife of Cadmus, clear traces of the Ogdod can be found in the heavens too. For, there are eight spheres of the heavenly bodies, and there are eight circles which astronomers most need to understand and which are most useful for knowledge. The four greatest of these are the ones which touch one another in a sense are two points, but in a sense, otherwise, the equator, the zodiac, the horizon, and the one which passes through the poles, which some call the meridian, others the collar, the four lesser ones, which do not touch one another at all, are the Arctic and Antarctic circles and the summer and winter tropics. Moreover, there are similar features among the things of the earth, since the Ogdod contains the limit for creatures which have feet, and after it there is indeterminacy, there are scorpions and crabs and similar creatures among those which have a definite number of feet, but any subsequent creatures are among those which are simply many-footed. The fourfold distribution of the teeth of human beings is in a way Ogdodic and the distinction of the four apertures of the head is defined by the Ogdode, and there are analogously similar aspects to creatures' teeth and claws. Hence they used to call the Ogdode mother, perhaps referring to what has already been said, for even number is female, but perhaps, since Rhea is the mother of the gods, because although the dyad was shown to belong to Rhea seminally, the Ogdode does an extension and some think that they very word Ogdod was coined to resemble Ekdiad, that is, the one which is generated out of the dyad, when it is cubed. Philolos says that after mathematical magnitude has become three-dimensional thanks to the tetrad, there is the quality and color of visible nature in the pended, and in salment in the hexad, and intelligence and health and what he calls light in the hebdomad, and then next, with the Ogdod, things come by love and friendship and wisdom and creative thought. The Ogdod is untimely for birth, in the case of Rhea, the myths, tell us that Cronus, as the stories go, disposed of her children, and, in the case of the Ogdod, labor in the eighth month is fruitless and, hence is called untimely. Among the number of the Muses, they said that the name, Euterpe was suitable for the Ogdod, because it is the most, changeable of the numbers within a decade, since it is even times. Even and is divisible up to the monad itself, which is naturally indivisible from Anatolius. The Ogdod is called safety and foundation, since it is a leader, because two is a leader. The seed of the Ogdod is the first even number. When multiplied by the tetrad, it makes 32, which is the time in which they say that seven month children are formed. The eighth sphere encompasses the whole, hence the saying, all is eight. In eight spheres they revolve in a circle around the 
Ninth, Earth, says Eratosthenes, the number eight is the source of the musical ratios, and the terms of the composition of the universe are as follows, the number eight is, in a sesquiactival relation to nine, nine exceeds eight by a monad, twelve is the sequiltra of eight and the sesquitation of nine, it exceeds nine by a triad, sixteen is the sesquitation of twelve, the excess is four, one eight is the sesquiltra of twelve, the excess is a hexad, twenty-one is the double sesquitation of nine, the excess is twelve. 24 is the sesquitation of 18, the excess is 6, 32 is the sesquitation of 24, the excess is 8, 36 is double 18 and the sesquilter of 24, the excess is 12. The 9 of the moon is in sesquiactival relation to 8, the 12 of Mercury is the sesquilter of 8, the 16 of Venus is double 8, the 18 of the sun is double 9 and the sesquiactave of 16. The 21 of Mars is the double sesquitation of 9. The 24 of Jupiter is double 12, which is the sesquiltra of 8. The 32 of Saturn is quadruple 8. The 36 of the fixed stars is quadruple 9 and the sesquiactave of 32. The excesses are 36 by 4, 32 by 8, 24 by 3, 21 by 3, 18 by 2, 16 by 4, 12, by 3, 9, by 1, alternatively, 9 exceeds 8 by a monad, 12, exceeds 9 by a triad, 16 exceeds 12 by a tetrad, 18 exceeds 16 by a dyad, and so on for the rest. On the Ennead, the Ennead is the greatest of the numbers within a decad and is an unsurpassable limit, at any rate, it marks the end of the formation of specific identities as follows. Not only does it happen, that, after the ninth pitch, there is no further super particular, musical ratio, but also addition naturally turns from the natural, end to the beginning, and, as was shown in more detail in the, diagrammatic representation of justice in relation to the pended, from both of these to the middle, at any rate, as regards the word, it is probably a riddling reference to affinity and equivalence, in the, sense that it is called any ad as if it were the hand of everything, within it, by derivation from one. That number admits nothing beyond the Ennead, but rather, everything circles around within it, is clear from the so-called, recurrences, there is natural progression up to it, but after it there, is repetition, for ten becomes a monad by the subtraction of one, elementary quantity, that is one Ennead, and again eleven and twenty become, a dyad by the subtraction of either one or two any ads, and twelve and thirty become a triad, and again one hundred becomes a monad, when eleven any ads are subtracted, and so on ad infinitum, so that it is by no means possible for there to subsist any number beyond the nine elementary numbers, hence they called it Ocenus and Horizon, because it encompasses both of these locations and has them within itself. Other evidence led them to call it Prometheus because it prevents any number from proceeding further than itself, as is reasonable, since it is thrice perfect nine and does not lack the advantage of multiplication, but in fact is both the combination of two cubes, one and eight, and since it is a square, it alone of the numbers up to it has a triangular number as its square root, at any rate, because it does not allow the harmony of number two be dissipated beyond itself, but brings numbers together and makes them play in concert, it is called concord and limitation and also, sun in the sense that it gathers things together, it is called lack of strife because of the correspondence and interchange of numbers from it to the monad, as was discussed in the diagram about justice. It was called assimilation perhaps because it is the first odd square, for odd numbers are called assimilative in general because of assimilation, and moreover, squares are assimilative, oblongs are dissimilar, and perhaps also because it is particularly assimilated to its square root, for just as that has attained the third place in the natural progression, so also the Ennead is third in the corresponding progression by threes. They used to call it Ephesus, because the way up to it is, as it were, by smelting and evaporation and Hera because the sphere of air falls under it, since this sphere is the ninth over the other eight and sister, consort of Zeus because of its being paired, 
with them on it and banish it because it prevents the voluntary, progress of number, and finishing post because it has been, organized as the goal and, as it were, turning, point of advancement. Both Orpheus and Pythagoras made a particular point of describing, the Enneadas pertaining to the Curetes, on the grounds that, the rites sacred to the Curetes are tripartite, with three rites and, each part, or is core, both of these titles are appropriate to the, triad, and the Ennead contains the triad three times, they also, called it Hyperion, because it has gone beyond all the other, numbers as regards magnitude, and terpsichore, because the, recurrence of the principles and their convergence on it as if from, an end to a mid, points and to the beginning is like the turning and, revolution of a dance. The Ennead is the first square based on an odd number, it too is, called that which brings completion and it completes nine, month children, moreover, it is called perfect, because it arises, out of three, which is a perfect number, the heavenly spheres revolve, around the earth, which is ninth, nine is also said to contain, the principles of the concords, four, three and two, the sesquitation is four, three, the sesquilter is three, two, and the double is four, two, it is the first number to, be in the sesquiarctival ratio. Comma on the decade, we have often said before that the creative mind wrought the, construction and composition of the universe and everything in the, universe by reference to the likeness and similarity of number, as, if to a perfect paradigm, but since the whole was an indefinite, multitude and the whole substance of number was inexhaustible, it was not reasonable or scientific to employ an incomprehensible, paradigm, and there was a need of commensurability, so that the, creator God, in his craftsmanship, might prevail over and over, come the terms and measures which were set before him, and, might neither contract in an inferior fashion nor expand in a, discordant fashion to a lesser or greater result than what was, appropriate, however, a natural equilibration and commensurability, and wholeness existed above all in the decade, it has encompassed, seminally within itself all things, both solid and plain, even, and odd and even odd, perfect in all manners of perfection, prime, and in composite, and equality and inequality, the ten relations, and diagonal numbers, spherical numbers and circular numbers, in, itself it has no special or natural variation, apart from the fact that, it runs and circles back to itself, hence it was reasonable for God to use it as a measure for things and as a nominant straight edge, when he added things to one another and fifth to them together, harmoniously, and this is why, both in general and in particular, things from heaven to earth are found to have been organized, by it. Hence the Pythagoreans in their theology called it sometimes, universe, sometimes heaven sometimes all, sometimes fate, and eternity power and trust and necessity atlas and, unwearying and simply God and fanes and sun, they called it universe because all things are arranged by it, both in general and in particular and because it is the most perfect, boundary of number, in the sense that decad is, as it were, receptacle just as heaven is the receptacle of all things, they, called it heaven and, among the muses, Arania, they called it all because there is no natural number greater, than it, but, if one thinks about it, number occurs and circles back, in a sense, to the decad, for a hecatontid is ten decades, and a kiliad, is ten hecatontids, and a myriad is ten kiliads, and similarly any, other number recurs and retrogresses either to the decad or to some, number within the decad, anyway, the reduction and returning off, all numbers to it is manifold, alternatively, the decad is called all because of the mythical, pan for pan is honored by means of the decad, that is, he is honored, on the tenth day of the month, and he is honored by ten, that is, generally speaking, by shepherds, goatherds, cowherds, horse, keepers, soldiers, hunters, sailors, gardeners, woodcutters and, those, 81, who lay foundations, and it is said that 10 species of, animals live with the human race, dog, bird, cow, horse, ass, mule, goose, goat, sheep and ferret. Again, they called it fate because there is no attribute, either, among numbers or among things which have been formed by, numbers, which is not sown in the decad and the numbers within, it, and does not also extend, in the remaining series, 
step by step, to what follows a decade, and fate is as it were connected an orderly result, it is called eternity because eternity, which encompasses all things, is said, since it is complete and everlasting, to bring everything to fulfillment, like the decade, it is called power because the things of the universe are strengthened by it, and ten appears to control the other numbers, and all principles as a defense and enclosure and receptacle, hence, it was also called custodian, because it is a compound of the numbers up to and including the tetrad. Moreover, it is called trust because, according to Philolaus, it is thanks to the decad and its parts that we have secure trust in things, being precisely comprehensible, and this is why it might also be called memory, for the same reasons that the monad was called memory, given the theologians claim in unison that necessity occupies the most remote rim of the whole heaven, and perpetually drives and urges on the whole rotation with an adamantine and indefatigable whip, then a decade would be necessity, since it circumscribes everything and, by mingling things one with another, and again separating them, it imbues things with change and continuity. The spheres of the universe are ten and fall under the decade. It is called Atlas because in myth the Tartan carries heaven on his shoulders, as Homer says, he holds the great pillars which keep earth and heaven apart, and the decade holds together the principles of the spheres, as if it were a dearmate air of all of them, which both turns them around and limits them, so that they can be best maintained. Spusippus, the son of Plato's sister Botone, and head of the Academy before Xenocrates, compiled a polished little book from the Pythagorean writings which were particularly valued at any time, and especially from the writings of Philolaus. He entitled the book on Pythagorean numbers. In the first half of the book, he elegantly expounds linear numbers, polygonal numbers and all sorts of plain numbers, solid numbers and the five figures which are assigned to the elements of the universe, discussing both their individual attributes and their shared features, and their proportionality and reciprocity. Next, in the remaining half of the book, he goes straight on to deal with the decade, which he shows to be the most natural and fulfilling of things, because it is, in itself, and not by our contrivance or by chance, the kind of thing which creates the finished products of the universe, and is a foundation, stone and was set before God who created the universe as a completely perfect paradigm. He speaks in this manner about the decade. Ten is a perfect number, and it is both correct and in accordance with nature that we Greeks and all men, without making any special effort, arrive at this number in all sorts of ways when we count, for it has many of the properties which are suitable for a number that is perfect in this way, and it also has many properties which are not peculiar to it, but which a perfect number ought to have. So, in the first place, a perfect number ought to be even, so that it contains an equal amount of odd and even numbers, without imbalance. For since an odd number always precedes an even number, then if the final number is not even, the other sort will predominate. Secondly, it is necessary for a perfect number to contain an equal amount of prime and incomposite numbers, and secondary and composite numbers. Ten does have an equal amount, and no number less than ten has this property, though numbers more than ten might, such as twelve and others, but ten is the base number of the series, since it is the first and smallest of those numbers which have this property, it has a kind of perfection, and this is a property peculiar to it, that it is the first in which an equal amount of incomposite and composite numbers are seen, moreover, in addition to this property, it contains an equal amount of multiples and submultiples, for it contains as submultiples all the numbers up to and including five, while those from 6 to 10 are multiples of the former ones, but since 7 is a multiple of none of them, it must be excluded, and so must 4, as a multiple of 2, with the result that the amounts are again equal. Furthermore, all the ratios are contained by 10, that of the equal, and the greater and the less, and the super particular and all, the remaining kinds are in it, as a linear, plain and solid, numbers, for 1 is a point, 2 a line, three a triangle and four, a pyramid, these are all primary and of the sources of the things, 
which are of the same category as each of them, in these numbers, is also seen the first of the proportions, which is the one where the ratios of excess are constant and the limit is 10. The primary elements in plain and solid figures are these, point, line, triangle, pyramid. They contain the number 10 and are limited by it, for there is a tetrad in the angles or bases of a pyramid, and a hexad in its sides, which makes 10. And again, there is a tetrad in the intervals and limits of a point and a line, and a hexad in the sides and angles of a triangle, which again makes 10. Moreover, if one looks at figures in terms of number, there is the same result. The first triangle is the equilateral, which has, in a sense a single line and angle. I say it is single, because its sides and angles are equal, and what is equal is always indivisible and uniform. The second triangle is to the half square, which has a single distinction of lines and angles, and so is seen as terms of the dyad. The third is the half triangle, that is half an equilateral triangle. It is altogether unequal in each respect, so from all points of view its number is 3, and you would find the same sort of thing in the case of solid figures, but going up to 4, so that in this way too you come across a decade. For in a sense the first pyramid, which is based on an equilateral, triangle, has a single, because equal, line and face, and the, second, which is erected on a square, is two, because of the single, distinction it has by being bounded by three planes at the angle on, the base, but being enclosed by four at the apex, so that as a result, of this it is like the dyad, the third, which is set on a half square, is informed by a triad. And along with the single distinction we have already observed in the half square as a plane figure, it has another difference too, in having an angle at the apex, which results in this pyramid, the one in which the angle at the apex is perpendicular to the middle of the side of the base, being assimilated to the triad. And the fourth, which is based on a half triangle, is for similar reasons informed by a tetrad. The result is that the limit of the mentioned figures is 10. And the same things occur, also in generating such figures, for the first source where magnitude, is concerned is the point, the second is the line, the third is, surface and the fourth is solid. From Anatolius, the decad is potentially generated by even an odd, for ten is, five times two, it is the perimeter and limit of all number, for they, run their course by wheeling and turning around it as if it were a, turning point in a race twenty-four moreover. It is the limit of the infinitude of numbers. It is called power and all fulfiller because it limits all number by encompassing within itself the whole nature of even and odd, moving and unmoving, good and bad. Moreover, it arises out of the tetractes of the first numbers, 1, 2, 3 and 4, combined, and 20 arises out of twice of each of them. Moreover, the decad generates the number 55, which encompasses Wonderful beauties, for in the first place, this is formed by, doubling and trebling the systematic sequence of numbers, the, doubles are 1, 2, 4, 8, that is 15, the triples are 1, 3, 9, 27, that is 40, and, the addition of these makes 55, Plato also mentions these sequences, in the passage on the generation of soul which begins, he, remove one portion from the whole, and so on, in the second place, while 55 is a construct of the decad, 385 is, an addition of the squared decad, for if you square the successive, numbers from the monad to the decad, and then add them up, you, will get the aforementioned number, 385, and this is also 7 times 55, moreover, if you count the letters in the word 1 you will find, by addition 55, moreover, if the hexad, the most fertile number, is squared, it produces 36, and this has 7 factors, generated as follows, 18, taken twice, 12 taken 3 times, 9 taken 4 times, 6 taken 6, times, 4 taken 9 times, 3 taken 12 times, and 2 taken, 18 times, the 7 factors, and the number itself, make, 55, moreover, the sequence of the first five triangular numbers generates 55, 3, 6, 10, 15 and 21 make 55, and again, 
The sequence of the first five squares generates 55. 1, 4, 9, 16 and 25 make 55. And, according to Plato, the universe is generated out of triangle and square. For he constructs three figures out of equilateral tree, angles, pyramid, octahedron and icosahedron, which are the fig, yours respectively of fire, air and water, and the cube, the figure of earth, out of squares.